Hello friends, it's nice to be with you today. My name is uh, Mike, Pastor Mike Clute. I'm from the United States, but uh, I sort of got transplanted over here to the Philippines. Uh, not really according to my will, but the will of the Father. And maybe I'll have time to tell you how that happened. But I'd like to start with a word of prayer. I have some young people here, relatives of my wife, and also Dell, the cameraman's children. We'll start here with Jody Lynn. This is Judy Lynn. Hi. Ibali. And April Lynn. What is your last name? Alfredo. Alfredo? Alfredo. Okay. Okay. April Lynn. And your name is? Cheyenne. Cheyenne hmm, Burhans. And Shane. Shane Burhans. So we got four young people. We have one young man in there that sort of served as my translator and bodyguard around here. <laughs> but he decided he had to take a bath. So I don't know if he's coming out later or not. My beautiful Filipino wife, she's very shy, so she's not going to be on camera. Okay, let's say a prayer as we start. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank you for your great love and mercy. We thank you for Dale being willing to come here today and do a video tape to share the character of God and to help us understand more about you and how to go into your heart. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity and bless everyone that's watching it and the people that are suffering hurting as they trust in you guide them lead them to be healed and to have their minds filled with wisdom that they will truly know your will for their lives and be blessed in Christ's holy name I pray amen well I must say I was a little um, had some trepidation as Dell was talking to me about doing this off the cuff like I used to do the talk shows in Portland, Oregon, KLIQ, and also KWJJ, well, that wasn't a talk show. KLIQ and uh, KKEY, there was about four or five stations there that I was on different times. And 1973, Dave Jack, who was the owner of KLIQ, 5,000 watt uh, AM station, he, he suggested that I do a call-in talk show. So I started doing that, and uh, the first day I was on there, I was really nervous, you know. What am I going to say if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer? But as soon as somebody got on the air and uh, asked a question, the Lord gave me the, the uh, answer, the Shekinah. I didn't know that name. I didn't know that title of the Holy Ghost at that time. But as soon as that question came in over the airwaves, I immediately knew the answer. And I wasn't afraid anymore. So that's the promise of the Father. He said, when you go into court or when you witness, don't worry about what you're going to say. It will be given to you what you need to say at that moment. So we have these young people here. And Dale was inspiring us and saying the Spirit will lead us and so forth. I was going to write down some of the questions. but So anyway... Uh, do any of you have Shane. any questions? Okay, Shane. Okay. Shane your is, uh, your question Stein, is... Uh, the handsome young man from, well, Guam is where your dad living, and you got transplanted here for a while to go to school. Anyway, what's your question? My question is why so many uh, people don't want God. So why do so many people don't want him or reject him? Okay, can you squeeze through there? Um, Come on, Yusuf, just squeeze through there. There you go. And uh, scoot over, scoot over a little bit, scoot over. So make room for this handsome young man. This is Yusuf, he just turned 19. So uh, we're glad he's here. He translates for me sometimes when I have talks to people that don't understand very much English here in the Philippines. They have two major languages here. Up in the north is called uh, Tagalog. T-A-G-A-L-O-G, and then in the southern part from Cebu south to Davao, they have a Bazayan or Cebuano. So they have two basic major languages. They have many other dialects, but those are the two major ones. And it's sort of like Spanish and Portuguese. They're 
cousins, first cousins. Anyway, your question is a very good question. Uh, and the answer is, we have free choice. God gave us free choice. And that started with Adam and Eve when they were confronted with the fruit, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they were told by a certain entity called the Lord God, Genesis 2, do not eat of this tree or I'll just have to zap you. And uh, as I explain in my book, Into the Father's Heart, uh, in chapter 26 on the animal sacrifice, I go into this question. I won't go into a lot of detail right now about it. But I explained that. But the point was, Adam and Eve had choice. And they made those choices. And we've had problems ever since. So, uh, why? And so, because of that first, shall we say, wrong choice, uh, the world went down. Adam and Eve lost their beautiful light, robe of light from the throne of God, Christ's righteousness. They lost that, and they had to leave the Garden of Eden. Now, I have a different explanation of why they left, and it's very simple. It's scientific. It's chemistry. In the Garden of Eden, they had the perfect atmosphere, oxygen. They could breathe. It was life-giving breath there. But as soon as their robe of light changed, their whole body chemistry changed, and they began to die. Dying now shall surely die. So their whole mind and body and their whole being began to go down. And so their breath, their body, was no longer compatible with the pure air of Eden. And they had to get out of the Garden of Eden, outside where the air, the whole creation was dying, the same rate their body was dying, and they were compatible outside the Garden of Eden. Okay, did you have a... Yes, uh, let me rephrase the question. Uh, why do so many people today, in 2014, uh, not interested in serving God. Why is it so unpopular? Okay. Why, why don't people want to serve God today? Okay. Okay, anybody have an idea on this? Before I try to expand a little more. Uh, huh? Yusufur, do you have any ideas or thoughts about What about you, Shane? Do you feel like your question is being answered or do you want to add to that? or? Do you, do you, do you have an answer of your own or you, are you seeking an answer? Is that it? I do have an answer my own. I think it's mainly because people are asleep. They're mainly busy. Okay. That's why I don't need that. Sleep is a, a spiritual or non-literal uh, kind of sleep where they're spiritually not awake. I've got pictures that I put in my last newsletter about, you know, <laughs> sleeping in church. So... So Jesus and Paul were saying, wake up, wake up. What's the word for wake up in your language? Matana. Matana. Yeah, I was saying that at the last little church up in the mountain. Matana, matana, matana. Wake up, wake up. And they were laughing. <laughs> they thought it's a joke. But to be asleep means to not be aware. Yes. Okay, expound on that a little bit. What You said yes, you agree with me. Why do you agree with me? Uh, to not be aware, that's what I was saying. Do you want to? Yes, because most of the people now in the earth is not thinking about salvation. Because they are they are happy, they enjoyed everything around in the earth, that they think that they it is their very uh, it is their good choice to have because they're not thinking that there is there is God who will come and who will save us. Okay. Yeah, they're not so they don't need the Lord for salvation yes, because okay. they think they already got a good life and they know yes. what they want to do, so why do I need yes. God in my life? Is that yes. basically? Thank you, Jody Lynn. Well, let's take up another question. How about you, Cheyenne? What's your question? It's okay. What you concerned about? What what do you what would you like to know a little bit more about? Okay, let, let's pass her for right now. You be thinking about it, honey, okay? We'll come back. Do you have any questions? Yusufer, what's your question? Um, the question is, 
about uh, Shekinah. Who is the Shekinah? Yes. You, you want me to give a definition of Shekinah because you hear me talking about it all the time. Okay. The word Shekinah is not in the English Bible, but it is in the Hebrew, in the original Hebrew. comes from a Greek, uh, rather a Hebrew word, Shekan. S-H-A-K-A-N, Shekan. Shekan means to live, to dwell, to abide, to even get married. Shekan is the feminine face of, of God. And it is actually... In uh, some books, and I Del just gave me one recently uh, that I haven't even read yet, but there's so much about the feminine image of God today that uh, in the Old Testament, in the, in the Hebrew, the feminine ending was changed by the scribes because they didn't want the, the Israelites to be worshiping the goddesses. And uh, that did happen from time to time. So they tried to change... The, some of the words and the meaning, the endings, the feminine and masculine. But let me just say in further answer, uh, first of all, Shekinah is the glory of God, which means his character. It's the feminine image, and there's a mother and a daughter. Now, Jeremiah speaks of the daughter of Zion. We have to interpret who Zion is. Zion is Jerusalem. And then in Jerusalem is a Hebrew word, J-E, Feminine for Yahweh, Ru, R U, Ruach, Spirit, and then Salem or Shalom, J Ru, Shalom, the feminine spirit of peace. And that's the mother God of Israel. And she had a daughter, okay? And in Paul's writings, I think it's in Galatians 4 26, he says, Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Okay, now. There was a change, a big transition in the early years of the Christian church when the Jews were so unpopular and were so hated because they had killed Christ. So there was a transference of allegiance from the old way of looking at God, Jehovah, the Hebrew God, Yahweh, and they were transferring to the idea of Jesus. Jesus the Christ who was the suffering Messiah who was crucified on the cross, but he rose from the grave and had 3,000 baptized there on the day of Pentecost. And then the church grew and grew, and then they were persecuted. Saul, Tarsus, the Pharisee, persecuted them, chapter 8 and 9 of Acts. And the, the disciples were scattered out of Jerusalem to all of the area around Palestine. And that was the Lord's will. They were supposed to leave, but they, they didn't want to... They were lazy, and they were not evangelistic. And so they had to be kind of forced out of their, their little cocoon, so to speak, and learn to fly, become the beautiful butterfly the Lord planned for them to be. So they went everywhere preaching the Word, and that was Saul of Tarsus that did that, chapter 8 chapter 9. And then he got rid of everybody in Jerusalem, and he said, well, what am I going to do now? I'm out of a job. I'm killed them all and persecuted, they're in prison or whatever. And he went to the high priest and said, I got an idea, I'll go to Damascus and I'm going to find out uh, how many Christians are up there and bring them back. So we're going to get rid of this sect. So they said, okay, and they gave him letters of authority and he's on his way up to Damascus. Boom, a bright light comes and he is blinded and he falls to the ground and he says, who are you, Lord? And uh, Jesus says, I am Jesus. I am Jesus, and why are you persecuting me? And uh, says, G you are who? Jesus. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I've been persecuting the Messiah. And in a, a flash of, in a just seconds, he understood that Jesus Christ really was the Messiah. He probably had the Old Testament memorized. So the Lord, like a computer, rearranged, reprogrammed his mind, so he understood that Jesus Christ really was the Messiah. And Saul, he was blind for three days, then he uh, was given his sight, and he was baptized, and he became a devoted, you know, disciple of Jesus. And he wrote about half the New Testament in the letters to Paul. But anyway, the point being the Shekinah. The Shekinah is the fire. Now, I've got one paper, I don't have it here, where I show the uh, fire in the Old Testament. 
Shekinah is always the fire. And she's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Came down on their heads the day of Pentecost. Tongues of fire. In the Old Testament, she was a pillar of fire that led them, kept them warm at night. And the cloud of the day, cloud of the day with Jesus, Shekinah was the uh, fire at night. And she has many names. Shekinah is just one name. The daughter of Zion is another one. Let's see, Holy Ghost in the New Testament. That's a big study. I just started on that, Dale. How about wisdom? Yeah, wisdom. Proverbs. That's very good, thank you. Wisdom is Proverbs 8, 22 to 31. And Adenif, she says, I was there with the Creator. I was helping Him. He possessed me. In other words, we got married. We were man and wife, and we created the whole world. She created the girl things, the feminine things, and Jesus created the, the male things. Now, this is, a, this is a subject that is always sort of on the fringe right now. And it's not part of popular Christianity. They don't seem to know, but they think it's her heresy. But uh, they, it's making waves. It's making its way slowly into people's thinking. I know myself, when I first heard it, I thought, oh, this is the craziest idea that God has a feminine side or as a woman or something. And I, I didn't want to believe that. And then one day the Lord spoke to me and said, Mike, you believe in counterfeits. Sunday's the counterfeit of the Sabbath, for example. We have other, other counterfeits. The Lord, the two Lords in the Old Testament. Sometimes the word Lord and God represents, or Satan, he, you know, identity theft, just uh, appropriated that name to himself. I am the Lord, and he would, he would do things. Yeah, okay. the way I like to look at it is the family. You have a father and a son. Well, what about the mother? Yeah. What about a daughter? What That's about right. the perfect made in, family? Made in, made in the Godhead. Own image. So if Adam was made in the image of Jesus, everybody believes that. That's not a problem. Okay. But Eve, she's a woman. Who's, and whose image was she made? Must have been a woman. What was her name? And then you go through. It's wisdom, Jerusalem. And you put all these Hebrew names in there begins to shape, take shape. But uh, the thing that came to my mind one day when I, I, I read this statement from Desire of Ages, I don't have it here, but a lady from Pennsylvania, she was talking to me about it about a year before, and she said, you know, Mike, there is a feminine image of God, that, uh, that there is a female entity that was in creation that created all the feminine things. And, uh, I said, oh, wow. I know the lady that you're talking about that started talking about this. I think she's crazy. Uh, and I had a bad attitude toward her. Now I, I, I realize I was wrong. But one day I was thinking about this, and I opened these Arab Ages to page 578. And it says, it talks there about the Shekinah. It talks about the, um, what is it? Uh, the angel of mercy. The angel of mercy was then folding her wings, ready to depart, ready to step down from the golden throne to give way to uh, to justice and swift coming judgment. And I thought, wow, wait a minute. A golden throne, a female being, a golden throne, the angel of mercy, and she, her throne, her is feminine. And I thought, wait a minute, maybe Terry was right. And I called her up and said, I just read this in Desire. Well, yes, Mike, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. You see? So, you have to be patient. It's taken me a long time to be patient.